Dear children, are history and historical facts boring for you? Today we have a very interesting report for you. Discovering Tut, the saga continues. It is by A.R. Williams. Why discovering Tut? Who was Tut? Let's talk something about Tut. Tut was the nickname of Tutankhamun, a king who was known as the boy king or the little pharaoh because he became pharaoh at only nine. He was born in 1343 and died at 1325. He was also known as the boy king and he reigned only for 10 years. But why are we so intrigued by him? Because we have discovered a mummy of his in a very intact tomb and by till date, as the saga says, till date we are not aware how he died. There is a mystery surrounding his death and there are many conjectures like he maybe he suffered a blow to the back of his head or he had a fractured leg which was infected. Now the tomb has revealed to us many things like he was married to one of his half sisters who is also buried next to him and he had no children. There were two daughters who were still born but no children. The fetuses are also mummified right next to him. There was a CT scan carried in 2005 about which our report is and that revealed that he was 5'8", so he was a tall boy and he was well nourished. Again, he was the son of Amenhotep IV who reigned for 40 years and his reign was full of chaos and destruction. The reason behind it was that earlier, the earlier deity, the god Amun, was destroyed, all his temples were destroyed and the new god, the sun god, the Akhenaten was installed. He was established as the new god and there was internal politics and rife in the land. When Tutankhamun became king, he restored god Amun and changed his name from Tutankhaten to Tutankhamun. And he was counselled in all this by a military commander, I, who was probably quite aged, old, and Horenheb, who became king for a short while after Tutankhamun died. Now let's talk about the report and the CT scan. In 2005, a CT scan was performed on Tut's mummy by the Egyptian government and the CT scanner, the diagnostic machine, was given to them by National Geographic and Siemens. It was donated to the government. The first fair hour was to, to taste a modern scientific treatment was Tut. That is why he is lovingly named Tutankhamun. Earlier, an x-ray had revealed that his Front, missing ribs, uh, front ribs were missing and the breastbone was also missing. Now, this was not the first time that the mummy was discovered. The mummy was first discovered by Howard Carter in 1922. When he discovered it, it was intact. Surprisingly, it was left intact and not robbed. Because usually, there was generally people were aware that the tombs of these pharaohs had lots of gold and jewellery and very interesting everyday things. But this tomb was somehow left intact because probably it was covered in debris. Now, when it was discovered and excavated, it had three gold coffins, one into the other. And there was lots of gold and jewellery as well as everyday things. Why this? The Egyptians believed in afterlife. They wanted their little king to have everything that he may have needed when he went to afterlife. The body was, the mummy was cemented to the coffin due to the raisins used in the mummifying process and it was so badly cemented to the coffin that it had to be, all his major joints had to be severed to bring it out. It had to be done to prevent robbery. Zahi Havas, the Egyptian government, uh, the Egyptian government officer was relieved when the CT scan process was carried out without any hitch in 2005. There was so much pressure and there was, it was such a tough task because there were scores of people and technicians, those were required. Also, they were afraid of the pharaoh's curse as told earlier. There was an inscription on the tomb that said that you should stay away from the pharaoh's tomb, let him sleep in peace or otherwise you will be cursed. So it was an end of a dynasty with the end of Tutankhamun. He was not as popular probably when he was living 
or in the Egyptian history, but now he is the face of our Egyptian quest. And that is why, that is why he still goes on living. He is as famous as in death as probably he was in life. And even 33 years after him, we continue to carry out discoveries for him. Now, why this report also needs to be analyzed for a little more things? This report highlights the human probing nature. Why we won't end up sitting at our homes and we will go on discovering things. And this discoveries, these discoveries have led to mummies which have opened up new and startling realities for us. For the, about the Egyptian history and the Egyptian way of life. Also, the advancement of technology has greatly helped. Now, why the saga and why does it continue? Because the mystery of the death of this king, this boy king is still unraveled. We are still not sure why and how he was killed and whether he was murdered or whether he died of an injury or he died of some mysterious disease. But there have been DNA tests and more CT scan after 2005 which reveal that he needed a walking stick. He had a fractured knee just a few months before he died probably and he also had an infected ankle. He was frail, he needed a walking stick. There were many walking sticks found in the tomb and he probably died from that broken leg and a sev several strains of malaria which later infected him and probably affected his immunity. Then there were genetic defects also because of inbreeding. You must know as there is clear evidence that he married one of his half sisters. So there had to be genetic problems. Probably he was suffering from temporal epilepsy that has also been speculated. So the, sa the, the saga still continues and the final cause of death of this boy king is still unclear.